Hello, welcome to Floyd Models Kit Review Time. Today we've got Eddard's 148 scale Mark 16 and FW190 D9 double dual pack kits, okay? It's a limited edition one because you get something a little bit special with this one as well. But you can see, you actually get both aircraft in the kit. So it's basically called the Rise of the Bubble Tops, obviously because this is the first of the Spitfire uh, with the bubble top on there for the canopy. Okay, and we've got obviously the later version of the Fokker Wolf uh, 190 being the D9, which is the stretched version. Okay, right like that. Beautiful box art, which is something we'll talk about in a moment. So a quick run around the kit, there's your actual thing. Not too much on this one, it's actually quite a strange box uh, for their usual way of doing things. Okay, so that's it, a little run there. The item number for this one is 11100X. Again, quite a strange number on this one. You can see we got them down in here. Uh, and as you can see, it comes with a flat packed A2 fine print, which we'll talk about in a moment. We've got cartograph decals, we've got photo etch and mask sets in there. And this is a limited edition, and I know we've spoken about this before, but apparently a proper limited edition of 1,000 pieces. I can understand this being true because of what you get as well, which we'll, we'll have a look at in a moment. So in the box, get a bit, bit of a tight now. I haven't looked in here at all. So we have very nice booklet. Okay, so as you can see, we've still got that beautiful artwork on the front talking about this one. And then generally, just running around through here, as I say, it's going to be obviously two kits down in there. So we're starting off with the Spitfire, as you can see down on here, and then working our way through. So as we know, sort of Eddard Spitfires are quite legendary now for being the best you can get in 148 scale. The riveting detail, everything is absolutely beautiful on this kit. So is the internal details, as you can see, running right the way through here. So usual thing, we've got some uh, photo etch for the instrument panels, various things like that. Okay, the gun sights, the harnesses, the various things all going down in there. And again, we've got some same, little bit of photo etch down in the interior to really liven up the cockpit area. And then working our way down through the wing set and everything else, the lower spar going through. Um, and then we've got the actual grills for the air intakes, uh, things like that, the coolers, right the way through around. Wheel wells, wing tops going down on there, the actual top of the cowling, and then the end, we've got the exhaust, various things down in here. And then the back, looks like we've got one piece uh, for the actual tail. It doesn't look like it's movable either, the way that that's going to plug in, nor does the rudder, but that's something you could probably uh, sort out yourself. Aileron's being fitted down in there. Again, they've got long uh, pegs, so I'm thinking it's down in there. Clipped wings going down on the end. Radiator grills and everything being put on there. The oil cooler scoop and everything else down underneath the chim. Putting those in. The wheels, okay, so we've got split piece and hubs, which tend to be a little bit of a pain. A little bit of photo etch down there for the actual suspension set. Okay, and then right the way through, and we have the tail. Then we're up into the canopy. We've got the mirror, which is quite a nice touch. Open or closed, obviously, for the actual access door going right the way through. Propeller being fitted on, the door closed, canopy shut. Then talking about the bomb fit for it, and then obviously we've got the mask for the canopy. And then we've got your color call outs. So as you say, you've basically got the one scheme down here as well. So this is the uh, Mark 16 TB886, flown by Bill Harper, um, number 421 Squadron, uh, Royal Canadian Air Force, late April, May 1945. Really nice to clip one with the bubble top. That's sort of the definitive uh, Spitfire. And then obviously down here, you've actually got your uh, stencil data for all your warnings and your various bits and your trestle areas going in there. Then over to the next one. So down in here, we've got a beautiful 148 scale um, Fokker Wolf uh, FW190. This is the D9, so it is the stretch one. Again, you can see down here, we've got some nice color photo etch on the inside. Same type of thing, working through the cockpit, which is something we've done recently. We've got the full gun deck, which is a very nice touch going down in there as well. And then we've got the back end of the engine with the actual the supercharger down at the back, showing it right the way through all those things, and then obviously for the internals going through. So we get no engine on this, but we do get the actual top gun deck, which is a really nice touch on this one. And then working our way through with the wings, with the wing opened, all the sections right the way through. And then uh, we've got the wing section going on the top, top of the cockpit. We've got the ailerons being fitted, the entire lower wing section being pushed up inside. And then we got the tails going on. Again, doesn't look like they're movable, but that's not so bad really in this scale, okay? And then obviously we've got the gear going down right the way through, and then gear being fitted on that all important angle down the bottom here. 
you can see it just down in here for putting those on, getting them correctly wound up. Okay, and then obviously we've got cow flaps open or closed uh, down on those. Bomb being fitted, fuel tanks being fitted, various things. And then same thing again, canopy going on, canopy mask set you get, which is quite a nice touch. And then doing it with all the doors and the various bits and pieces open. And then down on here, and I'm not gonna mutilate anyone's name. So we've got the FW190 D5, uh, which is seven, JG2, Rommel Holsten. Uh, looks like Stockholm, Germany, uh, May 1945 as well. Okay, so the same era, they would clash. Okay, and again, really nice. So we've got that sort of, you know, the metal undercolors going down on there with the limited edition on the green on the front. Okay, and then again, loads of stencil data in the back. Now, I've built um, their Fokker Wolf 190 and 148. Beautiful little kit as well. Haven't done a Spitfire yet, so watch this space. So, as I said, down in here, you're actually going to get two kits. So first up, we'll have a look at the Spitfire. So we've got these nice sealy bags, which are great, so you have to try and get them back in. <laughs> so, uh, where are we gonna start? I'll tell you what, let's start down on here. So actually they have chucked them all in together. So we've got bits of everything around in here. So as we can see, um, very spaced out sprue, lots of areas down in here and everything else like that. But the first thing that always jumps out at you with these kits, and hopefully you can see it here, is the sheer amount of detail, surface detail down on this. So you can probably or hopefully see all that riveting detail, catching it down there in the light. 148 scale, stunning, absolutely stunning detail on this. It's got a little bit of a texture to it. Don't get me wrong, this isn't sort of just polished and then it's on. The actual plastic has a texture right the way through, which isn't universal either. So some areas seem quite smooth, like at the top here, and then it seems to be more rougher down in the midsection. So it might be a sign of an older mold, okay? But generally, when you're looking around and you're looking at all these parts, hopefully you can see, if we catch it down in the light, there you go, you can see all that incredible detail. And this is the sort of level of detail you'd maybe expect in 132nd or higher, but definitely not really down in these 148s. But Eddard really have stepped up their kits recently and really pushed through with these. We've got the wheels and the various bits of pieces in the inside, no problems at all. Internally, very little detail, but don't forget you've got a full framework and everything for the cockpit is going to go down in there. All right, but again, no problems. All the ejector pins are nicely tucked out of the way. Nowhere you're going to worry about. No real sign of flash or anything else. It's just that little bit of texture on the molding. And I know a lot of people worry about the riveting is so fine on these about is it going to stand up to multiple coats of paint because let's face it by the time you've got a primer down a couple of coats down there are you going to lose it i would say thin your paint a lot nice little light layers and this will show through with every pass just make sure it's thin if it's too thick yes you are going to fill it all okay but generally very very nice there so again if we look at the um you can see here the wings beautifully done and when you just look at the quality of that riveting detail down in there. You can see it just absolutely pops, beautiful. This will give anything done by Tamiya in 132nd a run for its money. Very, very nice indeed. And just looking at this detail underneath again, fantastic, beautiful work. No problem with any of these. Again, nice, beautiful, clean molding underneath. No problem at all. We've got no ejector pins sticking up high that's gonna get in the way. Once down out of the way, we don't worry about those anyway. Nice little bit of detail on the wheel well. Again, some framework, some riveting details, things like that. Again, clean, crisp, sharp molding. All of that, very nice indeed. Right, now we'll try and keep this uh, aircraft, which is gonna be a problem, I'm sure. So I'm thinking that's probably German. This looking, it's funny the way they package it. I thought it would have been two big cellophane packs each way. Uh, actually, no, they've done it separate, okay? So, again, a huge old sprue, as you can see here. Very nicely laid out. Nice distances between it. The sprue gates are all nice and small. No problem at all, okay? And this is obviously for your Spitfire. So, working our way around some of the smaller parts, we've got the wing spar, we've got the guns, okay? So, we've got the cannons obviously poking through, the actual main gear legs, the nose cones, various items down here, the wheels, everything else beautifully looking nice. We've actually got some gorgeous riveting detail, even right the way down to the gear, doors themselves right the way through. The exhausts are hollowed out in the end. I know, don't know if you're gonna see that. There we go, perhaps a little bit. They're nicely done as well, right the way through. So all the parts, very, very nice. Very clean, crisp and sharp. Hopefully you can see all the way through, right the way down to these small guys, tiny little sprue gates. 
no problem at all working our way up down here. The prop itself, a little bit of flash on that, but that's really nothing to worry about. Okay, and even on the blind side down under here, everything's clean, crisp, sharp, no problem with that at all. Very nicely done indeed. And then we got down here, we've got different types of wingtips on this by the looks of it as well. We've got the Eclipse uh, wingtips as well. So as you can see, we've actually got the internals for the cockpit as well. Don't forget your little bit of photo etch, things like that going down there. Some of the bulkheads, tails, but again, beautiful work down here on the back ends of these guys. You catch them in the light, you've got that nice sort of ribbing work and riveting and everything else. Again, all of these smaller parts along here, hopefully you can see all those very nicely done, right the way down to beautifully engineered and detailed pitot tubes, things like that, right the way through to the gun grip, which is absolutely fantastic detail on that, beautifully done. The instrument panel, don't forget, we've got a color photo etch ones anyway, but again, control surfaces, all the bits down in here, catching them in the light, hopefully, there we go. You can see gorgeous details on all of those. And then again, over on this side, a little bit more bulkhead. We've got the bombs. Uh, the various things down on there, again, things for the gear, sway braces, all of those things, little trim wheels, and again, more control surfaces, different marks of Spitfire, obviously going to have these on, obviously these we're not going to show, and again, that's how part of the door, okay, really nice indeed, okay, and then we have, um, I'm trying to do this somewhat in order, so um, Spitfire, so we've actually got the colour photo etch, top there so we've got a little bit of normal steel a little bit of color photo etch as well and some harnesses no problem with that whatsoever we have got actually it's just a sprue gate scrap that okay but you can see beautifully done no problem with that and we have got a mask set i don't know whose mask is who but we've got a mask set down there just like that and we've got another one so no doubt one will be 190 one will be spitfire Okay, decals themselves, again, you can see them, let's face it, the cartograph, we know they're going to be beautifully done and totally in register, so you have got your two options down in there just like that, so that is very, very nice indeed. Uh, let's dig down in here, no, that's alright. Okay, so, uh, clear part, which is Spitfire clear part, I'm thinking that must be Skip Spitfire clear part. Eddard's very traditional now, we've got their sprue on a hoop. <laughs> so eclipsed uh, ones don't have these. These are the, the clipped version, okay? So these are the ends, so you've got the light in the end uh, and everything else like that. We've got the canopy, just gives you a sense of scale with this guy right the way through, and we've got the leading edge one. Again, beautifully done, very nicely done on these little trees like that. They're pretty clear, no problem at all. Again, because of the scale, you're getting into that realm where things look thick, okay? But again, I would dip it and you should be good to go on that, no problem at all. So that is very nice indeed. Okay, so there we go. That's the uh, Spitfire done, Mark 16. So now we can actually have a look at, we might as well start just here. This is your color etched, uh, photo etch for this particular one. So again, nicely done. We've got the sides, we've got the harnesses right the way through and a few of the little bits and pieces inside, including the rudder pedals, things like that. Beautifully done, no problem with that at all. Okay, then we've got, if we can get this out here, Again, it is that thing, very nicely done. And it's just the way that this has been put in as well. This is the stretch section down at the tail. It looks like a section that's been put in because it is different, okay? It's actually uh, a different area, okay? So it's got a different texture, which is great because it's gonna carry through. Some of that nice riveting, which I had to replace on that Revel one that we were doing. As you can see, some nice stuff generally all over that right the way through. And that all important longer nose. Uh, set down in there like that. Then we got the top, the actual uh, gun barrel. We got the um, turbo, uh, sorry, in the supercharger intake. Is it on that one? The supercharger itself. Okay. Cow flaps in the open position. Those big old paddles uh, for the prop. And then we got the back part, which is actually the gun cover here, which again will be nicely detailed on the inside. All right. And then we got the wheel wells. Again, we got that nice sort of insulation. Uh, stuff down on the bottom just like that and then the internals is again it's all going to be built up so there's nothing really inside these but generally very nicely done right the way through so hopefully you can see that in the light works an absolute treat then we've got the wing spar so again starting down the back you can see great detail on this not as much riveting as we've seen on the spit but that is correct for these types right the way over here 
generally very nicely done indeed and then we've got a little bit of work on the tops of those wings you can see them just like that now i'll be thinking there's a little bit more riveting on top of that it looks like there's not quite as much as we've seen that perhaps could be on here again a little bit of detail just down in here but very clean a little bit of molding work just for the actual uh, uh, fret type areas and the supports for the top of the actual flaps and then down here on the wheel wells you can see very nice clean crisp sharp uh, and everything else like this. and i'm seeing we've got a cut line down here so i'm thinking that you could probably cut and drop the flaps if you wanted to uh, to put them in yourself but generally very nice very sharp then we've got big old bag okay so I'm going to do the giant sprue first okay so this is pretty much the big sprue layout with everything that you can see down on this guy right the way through so if we have a closer look okay so wheels very nicely done in one okay so it is two piece one piece sorry completely they're actually completely one which is quite nice okay those big old gangly legs as you can see just down on there control surface very nice no problem at all we have got some scraping and to be honest i've got it here hopefully you can see that you can see that in the light that's actually a mismold but it's very light and it's only on the surface so i reckon you could sand that out that's not a problem just a little bit of um uh, obviously previous to this particular mold something was left in there and it's on top a little bit of a sanding job you'd be fine huge big wing spar right the way through instrument panel tops as you can see those catching those in the light you can see very nicely done indeed no problem with those and then again we've got the center fuel tank the gun bulges over the top so if you can have those open or closed right the way through and as you can see we've got details down on the inside with no ejector pins in there which is a really nice touch the same goes with those wheel wells no ejector pins on the insides all getting in the way and then on the other side you can see different type of wheels so we've got smooth tires or the ridge obviously you'll be picking the correct one for you and then right the way through all these other areas control surfaces nice raised details things like that wheels up or down tail rudder bombs bulkheads okay and we've just got the little area just behind the actual uh, cockpit sort of firewall into the uh, main gun bay okay so that's really nice indeed the cockpit itself is pretty much devoid but don't forget you've got full color that's going to go on this and replace all the details right the way through uh, next up we've got the cooler radiator set they're going to go around the nose okay around there like that we've got the pylons down here the exhausts not hollowed out on these ones unfortunately so you might want to take a little drill bit just down in there and do those so we've got this guy for the other side uh just down on here some of the parts this guy is missing something off of 30. i'm hoping that that is what it's missing will be the spinner cap all right so that'll be there okay and then generally looking around all the other parts even the boarding ladder looks pretty good pita tubes things like that the redder pedals if you were going to do those they're down on here everything else the nose another nose on here very nice indeed no problem with that again no flash anywhere no miss molds no sink marks that i can see generally very nice indeed okay okay last big sprue up we've got things for the gun uh and we've got the ammo bays and everything on this guy right the way through working our way down across all the pipes some of the hosing work the other gun bay and all the areas right the way through here some of the details some of the spars things like that really nice all of this one right the way through again clean crisp molding no sink marks no nasties no flash and even the burring isn't too bad the sprue is pretty heavy with burring but the parts aren't so bad at all the parts are pretty good so that's no problem with that then we have lots of canopies to choose from so we won't go down through this little thing again but again we've got a clear top if you wanted to go that way we've got obviously the the screens if you wanted the uh, different versions on those and then obviously we've got the bubble top and the flat top open and close this is how this works they are pretty good no problem again same with the spitfire a little bit thick at this scale but not too much of a problem at all i don't think there's anything wrong with those at all no problem whatsoever on those that's actually that actually to be honest they are very very clear i'm just looking through them and they are extremely clear that's it two fantastic kits probably the number ones if you're going to do it if you're going to do a spitfire if you're going to do a 109 or a 190 
Eddard is definitely the place you want to be looking because they are absolutely fantastic. Now this is a limited edition, it is to a thousand pieces and one of the things that took my eye for it is because what comes with it. And as we said, it is an A2 thing. So when this turns up in a giant box, you know why, because it comes with this, which I thought was a really nice touch. It actually is, and it's mounted as well onto a board. Just get rid of that. You actually get a mounted artwork for it. So it's not just rolled up and chucked in the box and all the rest of it. To see that it's actually mounted down on here and everything else like that for the full artwork is absolutely stunning. You might have a frame you've already got flying around but it would be nice to actually get a frame for this one and have it framed up because it is an absolutely beautiful piece of artwork that was actually done for Eddard as well. Okay so Eddard have done this one because it's under Eddard Models and Accessories 2016. But again, absolutely fantastic. Something just that little bit. We were saying about the limited edition kits and how uh, it's nice to get those little extras. Some of them come with books, some of them come with glasses, various things like that. It is nice, I think, in this type of environment, if you was to build both of these, you could have a nice little display. You've got the picture on the wall. It's a little talking point as well uh, and things like that. So definitely one of those kits I think you should look out for. And to be honest, keep your eye out. It's quite cheap. If you look around in certain sites, great in models. You can actually get this quite cheap because they tend to come up on offer every now and again and you can get them and they are an absolute bargain. So there we go, that is Eddard's dual boxing of the Spitfire Mark 16 and the Fokker Wolf 190 D9. Absolute must.